What's going on, Case Nation? It's your boy Kendrick Get a Jet Dot Blair back with another Better Late Than Ever review. Here, of course, we're going to be talking about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Um, many of you guys who probably don't know, this dropped on Hulu as of August 2nd. Um, again, this is another movie that I wasn't able to get to the movie theaters to go see. So once I found that it was on Hulu, I jumped on it and checked it out last night. Um, pretty solid addition to the new apes um franchise of course this doesn't take place within the caesar timeline uh those were of course rise of the planet of the apes dawn of the planet of the apes and war for the planet of the apes so this is completely a new moving if i'm not mistaken it's supposed to be like a new start to a new apes trilogy um there i'm creating right now so it clocked in at about two hours and i believe 30 to 40 minutes so fairly long, not, long as, not as long as the other previous um, eight movies, but definitely a long one. But I mean, needless to say, I enjoyed myself. I love the previous trilogy. I enjoyed every one of them. Maybe the exception of War for the Planet of the Apes, I just felt that went a little too long. I still enjoyed it, but it was nothing like Rise and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I liked, I enjoyed those two a great deal. But in any case, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, of course, if you've seen it, which I'm pretty sure most of you have already have, this takes place, the movie says, many generations after Caesar. In fact, the movie opens up with Caesar's funeral. Actually, um, the apes are, you know, they're burning him as you would do a monarch and things like that. So the following text says it takes place many generations after Caesar. Um, I don't know why I was under the impression, and I, this probably came from most other reviewers that, we're saying that this movie takes place like 300 years after Caesar and stuff. I'm like, you know, just looking at, you know, the entire setting of the movie, I just imagine it may have been like a good, maybe, I, I would say 50 to 75 years, maybe. That's how long the time frame from the previous eight movies up until this one takes place. Of course, we're falling in a new protagonist in the name of Noah. Noah is a young ape, young chimpanzee, who is a part of this clan known as the Eagle Clan. So in this, in, in the near future, apparently, apes have to divide themselves up into different clans, no different from tribes and things like that. So he would follow him, his two friends, as they try to prepare for a coming-of-age ceremony where they are then ambushed and basically kidnapped by a group of very aggressive um apes who of course are led by the i'm not gonna call him the main protagonist i mean the main antagonist of this movie um i think that distinction goes to like one other person as well i mean yes he's been advertised as like the main antagonist of the movie which is proximus caesar who fancies himself a king in like the next Caesar. Of course, in this instance, Caesar is seen as like, you know, Jesus for the most part in this in this film franchise. So everyone follows him. But much like in real life, everybody misinterprets what Caesar's teachings were. You got some good Caesar disciples and you got some bad Caesar disciples. Proximus Caesar is one of those kind of bad ones but he's not super outright evil if that's the best way to describe it you know i mean yes he enslaves a whole bunch of other apes and chimpanzees and stuff to do his dirty work because he of course is trying to break into this big vault door that contains secrets that he's not really too really familiar with but and the reason why I said before why I don't find him to be the super main antagonist of the movie because we're introduced to a human character in May who was gone by Echo and Nova. Um, we find out, of course, if you've seen the trailer or if you've seen the movie that she's actually one that can speak normally. You know, you remember if War for the Planet of the Apes, the disease, uh, the simian flu mutated and it started to cause humans to lose their ability to speak so she she of course is able to speak normally and has normal human brain function and she's 
have essentially been sent on a mission to break into said vault to get some things out of there. It is, of course, like a former military installation. You know, we open to see tanks, um, firearms, things like that. So, in a way, she's kind of like the secondary antagonist because while she's not outright evil or goes out of her way to like hurt the apes she is definitely not really working for them she's she's pretty much using them as a means to an end so to speak so i mean similar to proximus max um, proximus caesar but you know she's of course working for the humans and such um many of you guys probably seen a whole bunch of reviews and you figure and you know how the movie does actually end for the most part the character of noah is a very interesting one he's not like caesar Caesar, you know, had a presence about him. He had like a command of everything that was around him. He, throughout the previous Apes trilogy, there's a command that Caesar had. Noah is, of course, that he's he's a young, you know, unsure of himself ape who's just trying to find his place in his clan. You know, he, of course, has father is highly respected or he's an elder in the clan. So it's just one of those things where it's just like it's your normal teenage coming of age story. Um, And in this instance, you know, while while Noah is the main protagonist of the movie, he definitely has his reservations about working with humans. But of course, because of what he's heard, we eat another um, we, we meet an orangutan name. Raka, who is like a little bit, who follows T Caesar's teachings. Who, so he's like a devout Caesar follower. You know, he doesn't believe in harming a harming humans, things like that. So that's where it comes. We end up losing him in the middle of the movie, which is kind of sad. But, you know, when Proximus and Noah, you know, talk and have a conversation, I mean, you can tell that Proximus is very dictator-ish. But at the same time, he's not wrong about certain things as far as like not trusting the humans and stuff like that. So a little bit of that kind of rubs off a little bit more on Noah. And he kind of has a distrust, of, especially considering the fact how May was able to, you know, do what she does pretty much using um noah and the other apes within his group to try to, to pretty much get to where she needed to go to get to that military installation um there's another human character named travathan played by william h macy and you know he's of course a slave to proxima caesar you know kind of teaching him the ways of human civilizations from before beforehand and you know may ends up taking him out may takes him out you know towards the um climax of the movie because he didn't want to go along with the plan so i would say kingdom of the planet of this is just essentially a commentary on you know it's a commentary on religion you know how certain groups of your how certain groups of your race you know twist words and try to manipulate the masses into doing what they want them to do. We're, we're seeing it every day. We're seeing it every day. So, I mean, this movie, this, this movie came out at the right time, you know? So it's a different direction for the Apes um, series going forward. You know, the previous trilogy, the Caesar trilogy, you know, was is essentially the birth, the birth of, you know, the intelligent ape population and then just wanting to be left alone, essentially. You know, Caesar was a, character where he just separated himself from humans but he didn't outright hate humans you know in each movie we had a character in there or a human character that caesar would you know at least be cordial and friendly with you know and the first one it was his owner played by james franco and the second one it was um and excuse me for forgetting some of the characters names so the second one played by jason clark you know the third one it's um a different type of Nova who can't speak, but of course the main antagonist is Woody Harrelson's um military general, you know, who's trying to eradicate them all. And this news, this new movie, or I'm gonna say new trilogy because I believe that's the whole plan. There is creating a new trilogy of eight movies, and I think they're probably gonna go past that, past this one. 
Um, we haven't heard any news as far as like what the next installment is going to be about, but I'm very interested to see where this goes. Many have speculated this, that this is going to tie in somehow or somehow loop back into like where how where the original Planet of the Apes movies started from um with Charlton Heston landing believing he's landing on a different planet real only to realize he's actually landed on earth so many people are speculating that's kind of where it's going to lead into I can't really be too sure you know it'd be interesting to see how this but I would do hope they just do something completely original for the next couple of installments I mean either way this movie this movie is this movie solid it's definitely it definitely goes hand in hand with the previous apes trilogy um i would definitely have to give it a i mean it's on hulu so but like you know you can either watch it on hulu watch it on so watch it on streaming or if you didn't happen to catch the movie you could definitely pay for it on streaming it's, it's available to buy but luckily it was available for free on hulu so that's where you can catch it if you haven't seen it yet um as far as like you know the acting Superb acting, you know, everyone played the part. I mean, Kevin Durant as Proxima Caesar is epic. It's time, it's time to give Kevin Durant his flowers because his versatility is something to be praised. You know, this is a guy, you know, who's played, you know, Fred Dukes and X-Men Origins Wolverine. He's played the Floronic Man on um, the short-lived Swamp Thing series. Um, I believe he played the Archangel Michael in um, what, what, what's that damn movie? Um, I'm, I'm forgetting that movie. is It was with um, Paul Bettany, but you guys know what movie I'm talking about. He was in Smoking Aces. Um, this guy's... The, Kevin Durant's versatility is amazing. And he does a great job as Proxima Caesar. He does a great job. Um, Owen T, of course, plays um, Noah. I think he does a great job. He's th This is going to be a series as they continue to go, as they, con as they continue going, where he's going to, you know, definitely create a big name for himself. Um, it took me a while to realize who, who may was being played by and of course she's played by freya allen who played um siri on the witcher series <sighs> um i know we don't know much about when the next season of um the witcher is coming out i'm just gonna watch it just so i can see it through um the fact that henry cavill is gone from the series really 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 sucks but i kind of want to see how the remainder of the story goes so but yeah, it told me, totally took me a while to realize that Freya Allen was playing May. And like I said, definitely go watch it if you haven't watched it yet. If you already did, go watch it again if you didn't buy it on Blu-ray or whatever. But this is definitely a movie worth owning. You know, I enjoyed the previous Ape Trilogy and I'm very much looking forward to where the rest of this series goes. That's going to do it for my Better Late Than Never review for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Let me know what you think about this movie. Um... Who are your favorite characters? Where do you think the story is getting ready to go? And when do you think the next installment is getting ready to come out? Um, if you enjoyed my review, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Share this review with all your friends. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. I'm out. Peace.